Hello, my name is Mazen, and I'd like to welcome you to my beginner to intermediate level handstand class. Now you might be thinking, what is beginner to intermediate level? Beginner is anyone who's never ever been upside down. This class is for you, including everything. Wrist warm-ups, conditioning, and balance. Uh, intermediate is anyone who doesn't consider this pretty easy and pretty comfortable entry to handstand, as well as the handstand hold. If this is not something you can do, Comfortably, you will benefit a lot from this class. Now that this is covered, let's get started. And the first thing we want to talk about is how to practice. So this is not a yoga class where you learn handstand slowly over time. This should be separate from your yoga practice where you get really good at handstands, you get really technical, and so that you can enjoy your yoga practice way more and not have to worry about, am I gonna be able to enter that handstand or not? So you do this separately from your yoga practice and you can do this every day if you like. Um, for most people, you're gonna, I recommend doing this class following along uh, maybe three times a week. And during that long intro, you can be warming up your wrists. So for our wrist warm up together on this class, it'll be shorter, but when you repeat this class, you'll be warming up during that intro. Awesome, let's get started. So for the wrist warm-up, uh, if you've already done yoga practice, you can go through this very quickly. If not, please take your time for this. We're gonna do wrist flexion, wrist extension, uh, then radial deviation and ulnar deviation, then all the way supination and all the way pronation. So these are the six basic movements of the wrist. You do them with closed palms, with open palms, and just try to get some blood flowing to the wrist. Once you've done them a few times separately, you can start doing more fluid movements. So this is what I call phase one of the wrist warm-up, where you just do fluid movements. In phase two of the wrist warm-up, you start using the floor, but you're adding very, very little pressure. So I'm just gently laying my palm on the floor, not putting any weight, and exposing myself to various uh, wrist positions. So I turn the wrist out, I do this, I stretch, I lay the uh, back of the hand on the ground. And you know, when you're holding a handstand, you're gonna be like this, but sometimes to save it, you're gonna have to be like this. So start exposing your wrist to that kind of extreme positioning here. So this is phase two, and the goal is just to get some blood flowing and uh, get the muscles in the wrist to know how to engage what, and also know how to relax to allow that range of motion. And then phase three is for long-term adaptations. So this will get the bones actually stronger. You start adding some weight to all of the wrist positions we just covered. So you can maybe take one leg off, maybe lean, and just warm up your wrist that way. Start feeling where the weight moves in your hands. So don't keep all of the weight here or here or here. All of them are nice. Just experiment with where the weight moves and try to mostly keep it in that area over here. So you could do some cat cows in that warm up and just get some uh, wrist exposure here. Awesome, now that the wrist warm-up is complete, we're gonna do a small shoulder warm-up. So you can do this standing up or sitting down or uh, any combination, as long as your torso is vertical. We're gonna do a thumbs up cross position and just start pulsing like this. And while you're pulsing, notice what muscles need to be relaxed. For example, you don't need to be doing this. You can be doing that. Now gradually the upstroke becomes longer than the downstroke so that we turn from a cross position to a Y of the YMCA position all the way to the top and then all the way to the bottom. Take your time, don't rush this. And finally, we're gonna go back to the cross position. We're gonna stop the pulsing. We're gonna do a cactus. We're gonna internally and slowly rotate all the way we can. It might not look like mine, just try. And then externally rotating all the way. Once more, internally rotating all the way. 
and once more externally rotating all the way. And that's it, your wrists and shoulders are now warm, we're ready to begin. Awesome, the first thing we wanna do is try to get up the wall and get a little bit upside down. So if you've never done this before, this is gonna be pretty scary, but we're gonna do this together. And if you have done this before and you're repeating the class, please start going through the uh, shoulder range of motions we'll talk about later during that time. Okay, so you put your hands down, you try to put a heel to the butt and put it on the wall so you can kind of sit on your heel if you want. And then you see what you need to do to push with the hands, push with the foot and see if you can lift the bottom foot here. If you can lift the bottom foot, you can place it here and hang out here for a few moments. Now, if this seems very impossible, you could use a block or multiple blocks. So you can put a block here, put your hands, put your foot on the wall and the block and try to get up like this. And move very, very slowly and try to be as safe as possible. If something feels sketchy, do not move forward and try to make it feel less sketchy. Now, you can keep working on this or even pause the class or leave the class and keep working on this until you get it because in the next steps, we're gonna be building on to this. Okay, so you get on the wall like this, both feet, and you try to maneuver by trying to extend your legs and look forward. So you can see there's two types of movements. There's a leg movement, and also there's a shoulder movement. So it's almost like you're doing a plank to downward dog, but less range of motion and while you're upside down. Okay, so if you've watched me and didn't do anything, now is your time to do it with me. If you did it with me already, you can do it with me again. So, two feet on the wall, looking between the hands, try to just move around a little bit, notice how your wrists feel, notice how your shoulders feel, notice how your hips feel. And we're never moving forward so much that we ever feel like we're gonna fall over. We're always playing it safe, we can always come down like we came in. Awesome. <laughs> so. Now that we got that covered, we'll practice it one more time and then talk about what happens if you fall over. So, last time practicing this, get onto the wall once more. Notice I'm not very high up on the wall. I'm keeping myself low because if I'm very high up, I see some people starting to get loose here and we won't, don't want to get into that just yet, okay? So, keep yourself very low on the wall. And... When you're ready, just lean forward a bit, your feet go off the wall and you come down, control it, come down as slow as possible. Okay, now that we've done this a few times, we wanna talk about what happens if you go over. And we wanna kind of try to do it on purpose a little bit. So don't be too nervous. Uh, this is gonna be pretty all levels. So we're gonna go from very, very um, beginner to intermediate. So beginner is just trying to hop down and then trying to hop a little bit sideways. So instead of landing straight down, I'm gonna to try to land a little bit sideways, okay? Now we're trying to see what happens if we're, our hands are a little bit closer to the wall. So get it onto the wall. If you have the flexibility to start with the hand closer, that's even better. But if you don't, get on to the wall. Try to walk your hands a little bit closer and try to get your hips a little bit on top of your hands and jump to the side. Now, if this is too easy, you know what to do here. You'll be practicing the over jumps. Uh, for beginners, stay with me. Uh, so you're gonna come here. You're gonna bring your hips, maybe raise one leg, bring your hips over your hands and fall to the side again. Okay, so now you'll notice if you fall to the side, 
it might be a little bit harsh on your wrists. So we're gonna start lifting the hand. If this doesn't feel natural, don't do it yet, but just think about it, give it a chance and try it out. So I'm gonna notice earlier our feet were landing closer to the wall than our hands, now at the same level. Now they might even land further away, check this out. But I'm still safe, okay? Now, if you're repeating this class, you do it at the level where you are. So I showed all the variation in this one video, but probably a lot of you are gonna stay on the level one. Some of you may go a little bit to the level two, and some of you may go to the level three. So as you repeat this class, you don't have to complete level three to move forward, just practice where you are. Eventually, you'll be able to be so far up and still save it, and then you'll never be scared to practice handstands anywhere ever again, okay? So let's spend a few more minutes on this. Let's do whichever your level you're at. So I'm gonna do a few more. Uh, I'll do one of each level, so level one. Level two. And level three. Okay, now that we know how to bail, we're still not gonna try to fall, but if it happens, we know what to do. But still, every time, give it your full attention and try not to fall. And if you wanna fall, choose to fall this way. So, what brings us onto the wall so that if we're falling, we can save it? First of all, you can push with the hands. So try this motion, get into a uh, tabletop position and try to push down with the fingers such that this angle increases. So it's almost like you're doing this, try it on the wall first. It's almost like you're doing this, you're pushing yourself back, but instead of doing it on the wall, you're actually doing it on the floor. Notice how it pushes me back. So I'm here, I have weight in such a way that if I do this, it's gonna push me back. And then try it a little bit on the wall. So try going onto the wall, try to lean forward, and then use the hands and feel how they push you back every time you push down with the fingers. So that's one thing that we wanna be aware of. Now there's another way, which is getting your head closer to the wall. We talked earlier about the shoulder range of motions. So this is where we practice those. Notice that if you're on the wall, I want you to look at my wrists, my shoulders, and my hips. Right now, my shoulders are closer to the wall than my wrists, but further away than my hips. So it goes, if you go from further away to closest, wrist, shoulder, hips. Maybe right now it's also wrist, shoulder, hips, or maybe right now it's uh, shoulder, wrist, hips. Or maybe right now, it's wrists, hips, shoulders. So practice these for a little bit and see how each feels. Try to get your shoulders further away, your shoulders closer, your hips further away, your wrists further away, etc. Now, with everything being equal, if you bring your shoulders further away, you're gonna be closer to the wall. So let me demo this, just watch it, but don't try it yet. And then we'll keep practicing the shoulder range of motion together. So if I'm about to fall over like this, I can bring my shoulders back to the wall and that brings me safely to the wall. Notice I'm about to fall over. Oh no, I'm falling over. Oh. Ah. Even if it takes a little bit of time, it'll get there. So I almost fell over, I brought my shoulders, I waited, boom, got me back to the wall. So we have the hand technique, we have the shoulder technique, and you know, you can uh, weigh yourself with your foot. So if I'm doing something like this, and I'm about to fall over, I reach with my foot, and it causes me to go back. 
Now, you need to know all of these, but you don't need to consciously control them. If you practice them, your body will know what to do. Maybe just focus your mind on this one and let everything else happen naturally. Okay, so let's do one more shoulder range of motion together and then we'll get into the actual balancing. So getting up to the wall, wrist, shoulder, hips in that order. Now shoulder, wrist, hips. Now wrist, hips, shoulder. So just practice how you can move around while you're on the wall. Maybe if you're advanced, you can practice that with one leg off, maybe with only the tip of the toe on the wall. So here's the big secret about handstands. A lot of people think wall or no wall, but they don't think about tip of the toe on the wall. Tip of the toe on the wall is very close to the actual handstand, but removes a lot of fear and removes a lot of practice. So if you can practice with the tip of the toe on the wall, that's gonna be amazing. Okay, so now we're ready to start playing a little bit with balance. So hands on the ground and one leg off, keep the knee closed so it can weigh you down if it needs to, like we talked about earlier. Start leaning, 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 so tip of the toe. Use the hands to bring you back and just hold with the tip of the toe. Just build some endurance there. And come down. Now, a really important thing to know about handstands is they work much better when you're fresh. So now we spent a lot of time warming up. If you repeat this class, probably you'll do a little bit of the range of motion. And as I'm doing some of the basic stuff, you can skip ahead on your own and then redo stuff with me. But if you're already very tired, just maybe watch the rest so you can get insight to use in your next practice, but end your practice a bit short. For handstand practice, we're not trying to do endurance. We're trying to stay fresh. I'm a little bit tired. So usually I would stop around here, but if you're not, let's keep going. We got this. Okay. So we're going to try to get on the tip of our toe. And if we can, without any sudden moves, take the leg off of the wall. Okay. So we're going to go up here again, straight body, pushing tall with the shoulders. Leaning, leaning, tip of the toe, and getting off. You don't have to hold for a long time. Get back and come down. And while you're resting, we'll talk about form. So now just rest and look at me. Don't try it. Or if you're looking, you can try it really quick. Pause the video and then look at me. Uh, but we're going to talk about form. So as long as your hips are over your hands, in general, it should be okay to balance. So ideally you'd have hips, shoulder, uh, wrists, toes, all in a straight line. But as a beginner, that's really hard. For some people I've worked it with, it was much easier. So figure out what's your ideal position, be aware of it, and just don't stress too much. So I'm gonna show a couple. A lot of people, especially guys, will prefer to have the shoulders forward. So notice this. See how I'm balancing with my shoulders a bit forward? Traditionally, this is considered bad form, but that's only because it's made like bad form, like for circus, for exploring your body, for building muscle, for building strength, for building um, the ability to not panic in situations of danger. This is actually amazing. Okay, now let's try straight. So, you can have your shoulders and your hips in alignment, straight and elevated, and like balance here. That's all also works. And by the way, those are really hard to tell if you're not filming yourself and watching. So always film yourself and then watch. And finally, you can have the opposite. So you can even balance with the shoulders even more open than 180 degrees. And kind of like this, I'm making it hard on myself. But you can still, you can still balance here. It's fine. As long as you approach them slowly 
and like never rush. Don't be like, oh, I feel uncomfortable, but maybe if I hop, take a leap of faith, then I will balance. No leaps of faith required here. Okay, hopefully you're well rested. Let's do one more set. So find your optimal shoulder position. Keep that foot down. Start pushing, pushing, pushing. Balance, one, two, three, four, five. Now we're always staying a little bit closer to the wall. If you're falling over, that's fine. Just try to stay a little bit closer to the wall. Uh, I mean closer with how we're falling, not with our actual distance. Amazing. So take a short break and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so remember how we said the wrist and the shoulder opening can help you come back to the wall if you're falling over? Now we're gonna simulate what it's like to be in the process of falling over, but freeze time and try to reverse it. And how can we do that? By falling over onto the wall. So we're gonna put our hands close to the wall. If you've never done a kick-up before, let's cover that. Stand up to get your hips as high as possible. Walk a little bit forward. Keep your stronger legs, leg forward and your uh, less strong leg back and try to swing with the back leg, keeping it straight and then jump with the front leg and try to jump a little bit, jump a little bit more, jump a little bit more and jump a little bit more. Arms locked all the time, don't relax them. Okay, and now we're on the wall. Look around a little bit, breathe and come down. Now, it's very normal if you're kicking up to the wall for your back to arch. Just try to control it. Film yourself, watch it, because there's excessive arch and there's normal arch. I wouldn't stress too much about it. Uh, arching is nice. Actually, um, a lot of people prefer to do like a, whoops, <laughs> a scorpion handstand. And here you arch a lot, right? So. Arching is not that bad. Okay, once we kick up to the wall, we need to be able to know how to come down. So the three things we covered earlier in stomach to wall, where you can use your leg to weigh you down, or you can use your shoulder, or you can use the hands, all apply. I want you to test them. So I'll demo three kickups first, and then I'll give you time to do it. So, kick up to the wall, and try to weigh yourself down with the other leg it gets you down. Kick up to the wall and try to move your shoulders away from the wall. It also takes you off. And finally, kick up to the wall and try to push with your fingers hard and it takes you off of the wall. Cool. Try all three. Feel free to pause the videos or I'll narrate them. So you kick up to the wall. You start moving your leg away from the wall without pushing off of the wall. You're trying to move away from the wall without actually using it. So weigh yourself down. Now kick up to the wall again. Start moving your shoulders away from the wall. You get down and finally kick up and try to push with your fingers and it'll take you off. Okay, so I mentioned the wall being like you're freezed in time. That's because when you kick up and you're resting on the wall, it's as if you were falling over, but the wall stopped you. So now instead of pushing off of the wall, which is not possible in the middle of the room, we're trying to see what else can we manipulate in our body so that we get off the wall and we can start balancing off of the wall. Okay? My personal favorite, having experienced all three we just did, is to try to push with the fingers off, but just before falling, relax the fingers again and push with the fingers just before falling, relax the fingers again. So let's try that out. Kick up to the wall. If you're pushing as hard as possible with the fingers and you're not falling, that's because your shoulders are too close or you yourself are too close to the wall. So move your shoulders, push up and come back. Push up and come back. Push up and start pulsing, 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 pulsing. pulsing. And you've just balanced a handstand. Okay, so maybe skip back 15 seconds and try that with me again. And now we've covered the basic stomach to wall, basic back to wall, 
concepts of balance. Uh, if you're, if this is too easy, just maybe stop doing this class. If this is too hard, keep doing this class and every time maybe skip ahead or um, work with me. And as you build more time and you know how to, it is to be in balance, then kicking up will be much easier. Uh, we'll cover that in a separate class. Thank you so much for attending and please let me know if you have any questions.